Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. Uh, sorry, uh, so we have started a little late. Um, so thank you for being patient. We are experiencing a technical hitch, uh, but thank you so much for waiting for us as we sorted out the issue. So we are going to start right away. Uh, my name is Joy Atieno. I'm joined on the chat button by my colleague Evans Rabare. And Evans is going to be helping us with um, the moderation. Uh, Evans is going to be assisting us with answering the questions. So please make sure Evans you. Rabare. And Evans is going to. So just make sure you tell us where you're joining us from. Uh, you know, tell us you know your expectations for today's session. Tell us what you're looking forward to, and also tell us where you're joining us. Um, you're joining us from. So let's take like one minute to uh, to know where you're joining us from. Anyone wants to share with us? Anybody wants to share with us where you're joining us from, what you're expecting? So guys, tell us where you're joining us from, tell us what you're looking forward to, and then we can continue. I'm joined on the chat button, as I had mentioned. I'm joined on the chat button by my colleague, Evans Rabare. And Evans will be helping us with moderation and answering questions and all that. So make sure you keep him busy. OK, as we wait for more people to join us, as I wait for people to introduce themselves, today we are going to be covering an important topic. And the topic is how to build So today we are going to look at how to build your brand uh, and apply for jobs. How to build your brand and apply for jobs. So tell us where you're joining us from and we'll be more than happy to recognize you. Just tell us where you're joining us from and then we will give you a shout out. We will give you a shout out. Okay, so we will continue. Um, today we are going to be covering how to build your brand and apply for jobs. Our agenda is going to be number one, we are going to look at how you can manage your digital footprint and social profiles. We are also going to look at how to write a professional CV. And then finally, we are going to finish with how to craft a cover letter. So I know uh, most of us joining us probably you have recently graduated or uh, you're still in school. Uh, whichever level you are at, it is important that you learn how to build your brand, your brand and apply for jobs. Especially now that you're living in very special times, the COVID pandemic has affected the way we work, has affected the way has affected like all facets of our lives, right? So it is just important that we learn how to build uh to build your brand it's important to learn how to build your brand and apply for jobs so that's going to be our agenda for today we are going to look at how to manage your digital footprint uh, we are going to look at how to write your professional cv and then we are going to look at how to your cover uh your cover letter so tell Joining us from, uh, tell us what you're most excited about this session. 
And you know, the most amazing thing is you can also tell us, you know, where you heard of us from, right? Where did you hear about this session? Uh, so that we know about which uh, customers. And it's important that we understand, you know, where are you discovering our sessions from? Is it from one of our collaborators? Is it through social media? Where is it that you discover our sessions from? I can see Mopo joining in. Uh, I'm holding Marcy joining from Kampala. Thank you so much, Marcy, for joining us. Okay. So, guys, tell us. Tell us where you're joining us from. Glad to, to give you a shout out. If there are any distractions for the background, guys, please just point it out to me. Uh, I know I'm seated in uh, our office is along a busy highway, so if there are any distractions, kindly point it out with me, and then uh, we can correct that. And okay, so agenda. And now, first agenda, I always start with asking one question. Which social media use currently? So use the chat button to tell us which social media channels you currently use. Which social media channels do you currently use? Tell us which social media channels you currently uh you currently use and you'll understand why it's important for you to recommend use because they greatly affect uh what we call they greatly affect what we call your digital footprint so it is just important that you understand the importance of your digital footprint and then how it affects your uh your job search prospects or when you're building your uh your profile online guys use the chat button to tell us which social media channels do you currently use okay as we are waiting for more answers to come in i'll move on swiftly and cover how to manage your digital footprint and social profiles i can see tatai is joining us from mwanza uh welcome so much tatai to the session we are glad to have you join us So we want to look now at how to manage your digital footprint. And guys, please tell me first, which social media channels do you currently use? And you'll see how uh, your, the social media channels or whichever websites that you always go to online oftenly, uh, you'll see in a minute how they greatly affect your job search efforts. So tell us, which social media channels do you currently use? <sighs> Marcy, Tatai, anybody who wants to give us some answers? Which social media channels do you currently use? Marcy, Tatai, anybody? Which social media? Let's look at how to manage your digital footprint and social profiles. But before we look at managing your digital footprint and social profile, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about a digital footprint? What is it that we're exactly talking about when we talk about a digital footprint? So let me have some answers. What do you think your digital footprint is? What do you think your digital footprint is? When you're talking about a digital footprint, what do you think a digital footprint is? What do you think a digital footprint is? So I always give this analogy. I always give this example every time uh, I'm doing this session. And I always tell people the best way for you to understand, the best way for you to understand your digital footprint is 
picture a day when it just rained and especially in uganda right now there are a lot of heavy rains right so when you're walking in the mud and then you're leaving those footsteps those prints right on the ground those are your physical digital footprints those are your physical footprints now when you go online we now have what we call a digital footprint so your digital footprint when you're online your digital footprint is simply all the stuff that you leave behind as you use the internet uh, as you're browsing social media as you're browsing the internet as you're buying stuff probably on like jumia it build it builds up what you call your online history so probably you've heard of the word history right so it's a part of your online history and can potentially be seen by other people so that's what we call a digital um that's what we call a digital footprint there's so many ways that you leave your digital footprint online or what you call your online history there's so many ways that you leave your online history uh online so number one and the biggest culprit is social media because on social media is where you upload a lot of content it's on social media that you know you are liking people's stuff you're uploading photos you are being tagged on other content you are reposting you are retweeting you are following pages so it is easy for all these things to leave a mark and then using digital devices like for example some of the mobile applications that you download or some of the websites that you visit they will always collect information about you right around your login details um around your habits you know what is it that you go inside there and do and then they tag on you uh using special identifiers especially like if they're using google analytics and that kind of thing and then there's online shopping uh for example when you go on jumia and you click on a photo right when you click on a photo uh on jumia let's say you click on like a phone now when you close jumia then you leave jumia and go to another page like let's say facebook or let's say you go like on facebook or uh or any other you just leave jumia and go to any other website you'll find that that particular thing that you clicked on when you're on jumia it is following you everywhere right so online shopping retailers and product review sites often leave what we call cookies in their system and these cookies are the ones that they use to track your activity uh when you leave their page and then it allows them to target and uh to target you or retarget you so you'll find that they send targeted advertising according to what you did in their pages so that they make you a uh, return to their page and maybe close uh close that uh, that's a sell if you have not finished it so the easiest way for you to discover your such uh your digital footprint is to do a simple exercise just search for your name go on social media uh, go on search engine like google whether it's Bing, whether it's Yandex, whether it's Yahoo, just go on the search engine and search for your name and then find out what exactly comes out related or associated to your name. So what comes up when you, you search your name on a, um, on a search engine? So currently, 70% of employers are using social media to screen candidates during their hiring process and that's why it's important that you understand that you do that exercise that i've just done right now that i've asked you to do so you can do it after this session that's why it is important for you to uh do that exercise and find out find out what comes up related to your name because 70 percent of employers 70 percent of employers are uh, are using social media to screen candidates during the hiring process so employers use social media in so many ways number one 15 percent of the times that you like retweet or comment or repost or reshare or get tagged on content online it leaves a mark and for those who know how to find it they will find it right no matter how much you conceal it because most of the time a lot of content on social media is very public right so if i just search for you and it is very possible you search for your name on on like facebook okay nowadays facebook due to privacy issues has limited uh the kind of results that come out related to somebody's name right but still they always show some posts that are tagged to your name when i just search for your name now 
employers usually look for candidates who have a, a 50% professional online personal brand. Employers recognize that, you know, online, you know, yeah, you're going to have some fun with your friends and, you know, banter and catch up and, and all that. But also, they want to see... <sighs> Sorry, guys, give me a moment. But they also want to see that, you know, apart from just uh, you having fun with your friends, are you also, you know, living uh, the talk according to what you say you do? Right? Uh, according to what you say you do, can somebody see it on? You are saying you're a graphic designer, but yes, also, uh, apparent in your profile. You know, are you saying you're a digital marketer, but online nobody knows or it's not even obvious from what you share that you're a digital marketer. So 50% of, uh, of your online digital footprint should be around uh, professional, building your professional uh, brand. Now, alone, right? Employers also look at what other people are posting about you. Which other posts are you getting tagged on? You know, uh, uh, what kind of postings uh, are other people associating with you? So that 4% of the time, employers will check for what other people are posting about you. Which kind of posts are you getting tagged on? Which kind of content? You know, uh, what kind of people are you associating with? And so employers are relying on social media and your online digital footprint to make uh, key decisions around whether to hire or not to hire you, right? So you need to understand how then you can manage your digital footprint. Managing your digital footprint, rule number one is just think before you click, right? Think before you click, before you write that content, uh, before you post, before you upload that photo, before you unfollow, before you follow whoever you want to follow that content, you need to think about it. Is it factual? Is it uh, is it based on facts? Is it rumors? Is it going to offend people? Right? So you need to think before you click. Rule number two is always post positive content. Right? Strive as much as possible to, you know, spread positivity online, spread love, spread joy. There's a lot of social media bullying and cyber bullying that's going on, leading people to very horrible parts like suicide. So you don't want to be a part of uh, of that. Number, uh, number three, always analyze your digital footprint. Analyze your current digital footprint. How does it look like? You know, what is it that when somebody searches for your name, they're going to discover? And then once you have analyzed your footprint, clean up on the content. If there is anything that you think, you know, is off, is there by mistake, then make sure that you are uh, cleaning it up. And then finally, update your privacy. Updating your privacy helps you lock your account so that you don't get dragged into... Uh, so that you don't get dragged into content that you do not need to be a part of right? So update your privacy in order to limit those that can see whatever that you share. So there are so many ways that you can update your privacy on the different social media channels. On Facebook, it is simple. You just go to the drop down button. When you go to Facebook, you will see three lines, right? Like forming a, a square or a, or, or a rectangle. So click on it. It will bring you a drop down button. It will take you to privacy. Then under, when you choose privacy, it will take you to privacy settings and tools. So these privacy settings and tools, uh, you'll be able to do several things. You can be able to, to limit those who can see your activity. So you can limit those who can see your future posts. You can review all your posts and things that you are tagged in, right? So you can be able to go in and even archive some posts that you don't want to be seen and to be related to you to, or to your brand. And then you can also limit the audience for posts that you have shared with friends or friends or, uh, or, or friends or friends or with public. So you can limit who can be able to uh, to see your posts. And then you can able to also limit how people can find you and contact you. 
So you can limit who can send your friend requests. You can limit who can see your friend uh, your friend list. You can limit who can look you up using probably the email address or the phone number that you have provided. Uh, you can also limit uh, the the kind of engagement, or you can limit search engines from you know picking up your 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 activity that you do on on social media. And then on on Twitter, on Twitter is almost the same. So you just go under general settings. You go to settings. You go under general settings. You go under privacy and safety. Under tweet, under Twitter, you can protect your tweets such that you limit those who can see, those who can reshare it, those who can retweet it, those who can, uh, uh, those who can um, can uh, reply to your tweet. You can also limit photo tagging. You know, if you don't want people to be tagging you left, front, and center, and then you find yourself in uh, a mess that you did not anticipate, then you can also limit that one. You can also limit your Twitter direct messages, those who are able to uh, send messages to you. So you take the control so that it's only you who can uh, who can initiate conversation so that you are in uh, you are in control. OK, so we have seen uh, Twitter and Facebook, and I think those are the um, the two major media that I think most of us are conversant with. But when you are trying to be build your professional uh, online profile, especially on uh, social media, then the best choice for you will be to create a LinkedIn account. Because a LinkedIn is just a social media, but it is for a professional network or prof professional community. You can access LinkedIn either directly on your browser at www.linkedin.com, or you can download uh, the LinkedIn application from Google Play Store or the Apple Play Store. So LinkedIn is important, especially when you are trying to build your professional profile. It comes in handy when you're trying to build your professional profile because LinkedIn allows you uh, LinkedIn allows you to create a professional profile. With I know with Twitter or Facebook, it's very challenging if you want to take on a, a professional, a fully, fully professional uh, uh, brand, right? Because there's a lot of distractions. You know, the people who do a lot of antiques on, on Facebook and Twitter are the ones that get a lot of attention. But on LinkedIn, you don't have that pressure to conform because on LinkedIn, everybody is being very professional. So LinkedIn is a social media network that focuses on professional career development. So as much as you are able to do everything that a social media brings along, you know, share around sharing content, around networking through sending friend requests, uh, around creating your profile, you know, uploading photos and that kind of thing, but you're still able to uh, tap into a professional network, explore and apply to job listings, and then uh, develop your career. So on a LinkedIn, first of all, you need to create your professional profile, and it is divided into three. Number one, you'll see the headline. Number two, you will be required to put your about about you information, and then you need to put your experience too. So with your headline, uh, your headline is the first point of impression that a prospective uh, employer will see. So you want to make sure that you put in your professional headshot, you know, a passport photo is enough, uh, showing you fully, um, you know, um, and then you want to put also your, your, your official name according to your official documents so that you have that consistency. And it's important as much as you have a LinkedIn profile, if you have a, a Twitter one, if you have a Facebook one, it's important that you maintain the same stance across the, the board. Have the same professional headshot, have the same uh, official name for consistency so that you can be easily discovered right and then your about you page is where now you talk about you know your experiences what is it that you do uh what is it that you have achieved so far and what are your professional goals what is it that you are you are looking at what's your uh your five-year projection plan or whichever projection plan you have uh, for your career and then finally you finish with the experience your experience is the way you always write it on your cv right uh, you first write your the position uh the company the period and then uh what your role entailed and what exactly you achieved so then you put your experience too done that then your profile now goes live 
but if you do not connect with other people then you're not able to be discovered so make sure that you're making connections by growing your contacts and connecting with potential leads with instant messaging so for example if you are in the you are a web developer or if you're an accountant if you're a lawyer you want to tap into a professional network that resonates with the category that you work in or the industry that you work in so make important business connections uh and and when you're sending this request make sure that you also include a message right so that somebody knows even if, if they know you well and good if they don't know you then make sure that you're explaining to them why exactly you want to connect with them and then also there are so many professional groups on in, on linkedin so you are you if you join one of them you're able to keep yourself uh, informed with the current developments in your industry or in your category so that you are informed now when you're on a professional social media channel like linkedin there's some do's and don'ts right that some do's number one make sure you are nurturing right relationship don't go open your linkedin account and sit in a corner in a cocoon somewhere nobody knows even you exist on the platform right so make sure you nurture relationships have a professional headshot and make it as recent as possible so that somebody can know you know who you are and how you look like it's not a point of like uh uh, it's not a point of like gauging if you're the best for the position but it's just important for somebody to have that familiarity with you online and then keep it professional right keep it professional do not send irrelevant messages do not start criticizing others or being negative do not uh do not spam people you know yeah i know maybe you have been wanting to connect with bill gates or uh jeff bezos or elon musk or you know whoever it is but then don't go spamming people be very objective you know relationship building is a process you must build the trust you know after building the trust then you can be able to uh, collaborate so make sure you trust the uh you trust the process so when you're sharing content across all social media number one it's important that you're using relevant hashtags hashtags usually help in uh making your making your usually help in making your content or whatever you're sharing easily discoverable right so make, make sure you're using relevant hashtags uh and then make it visual human beings are very visual if you just use text they may not read but if you include a me an image or a video or a meme or a gif once they see it it will attract their attention and then they're able to read the text the accompanying text and then content matters make sure that whatever you are sharing is very useful is very insight, insightful it gives great perspectives you know and make sure that you know you are projecting the kind of knowledge that you possess and then also always start or join conversation when you're driving conversations with your network you'll be able to be discovered when you're contributing within your network also people will be able to discover what you are really uh made of so I'd like to stop here and look at these posts. And guys, you tell me what what is wrong with these posts? What do you think is wrong with these posts? Are you able to see it clearly? Are you able to see it clearly? Are you able to see the post clearly? Okay, so let's look at this post and then we will understand better how uh, our social media profile or our digital footprint actually affect our uh, job prospects. So let me just read it out for you. Uh, let me read it. So this is Joseph. Joseph is a digital designer, uh, what you call a user experience, user interface uh, designer. So Joseph says, I'm so happy I'm listening to Tiff. T4F while pretending to work. This is a post that Joseph put on LinkedIn. So Joseph forgets that he puts probably his company on his profile and the company is able to discover all the employees online. So the boss comes in, Joseph's boss, and comments, this is a nice status update. How stupid can you be? You can fool me, but when you act in total disrespect to all the hard work of people and abuse the, the environment, then you have crossed the line. 
So what do you think? Was Joseph given a, a promotion? Let's look at another one, Jane Doe. Let's look at another one, Jane Doe. So Jane Doe says, I love when I can hear my boss talking on the phone at work. As long as I can hear her on the phone, I know it means she's not going to sneak up behind me and see how many web browsers I have open. Jane Doe is an account manager. So Jane Doe's boss comes and says, I love when my employees post things like this on LinkedIn. I'll need to see you in my office at four. Your boss. What do you think happened to, to Jane Doe? What do you think happened to Jane Doe? What do you think happened to Jane Doe? Okay, as we wait for some responses to come in, I'll pause here and take some questions. Are there any questions, guys? Any questions? Any questions this far? Okay, if there are no questions, then we'll proceed on. So let's look at how to write a professional CV. So what for those who have ever written a CV, what information do you think should go on a CV? What information do you think should be included on a CV? What information should you include in a CV? What information do you think should include in a CV? So building your CV, number one, you may include as many information as you want on your CV, but remember, a CV does not need to be very long. If you can keep your CV to two pages or three pages at most, the better, right? So you can uh, you can put whatever else the job description requires, but the most important are four, and especially three: personal information, your experience, your strengths, hobbies, and interests are optional, but they always give the employer a better understanding of who you are outside of outside of work so when you're talking about personal information you need to put uh general information and contact information general information is around your full name and this has to be your official name and then your address your contact information the least you should put is your phone number and your email so those four your name your address your phone number and your email so there are some jobs that may require you to put age, may require you to put nationality, may require to put other requirements like driving license. So whatever your job may require, you may add, but always remember that these four, your full name, your address, your phone numbers, and your email are the most important. And then your experience. Your experience is around uh, stating the role that you did. After stating the role that, that you had, you have to state what did you do what was the what were you required according to your job description to do and after you have uh, described the role then now you want to show what did you achieve and when you're explaining your achievements you need to look at the current job posting that you are applying for and look at what exactly they look for and when you're speaking at you and you're speaking your achievements then you need to highlight some of those requirements of this new role under your achievements then there is strengths and skills. So when you talk about strengths and skills, um, we have skills, we have the hard skills and the soft skills. So hard skills are technical skills that may be learned or may be acquired or there may be natural talent. So things around singing, graphic design, fine art, uh, being a lawyer, being a doctor, being a teacher. So those are technical skills that you can see the results of. Soft skills are what you call strengths. These are personal attributes that come out in the way that you conduct yourself, in the way that you carry yourself, in the way that you do your work, right? So those are what you call soft skills. And most of the time, skills and strengths are a result of experience. You must have had a human experience at work, uh, at school, or just life experiences that then builds that skill or strength in you. So maybe something you did you need to consider what you did well uh you need to consider some, an, an opportunity where you had to do something and you did it in a different way you know uh you are a good problem solver you will only discover you're a good problem solver when you do something from an experience 
right? So that's how you translate uh, experiences to strengths. So I know when, when you are looking at your strengths and uh, experiences, you may have many, many of them, but look at the job description and consider what the job description requires of you and then pick on top three strengths, right? What are these three things that will make you most suited, uh, suited for the job that you are trying to apply for? So now creating a CV has been made so easy with the use of Google Docs, right? Creating a CV has been made so easy with the use of Google Docs. So when you're using Google Docs, um it comes with templates right but i know maybe somebody may be wondering where do you get google docs number one if you already have a gmail account you automatically have a google doc right you already have access to google docs so you can either access it directly from the browser or from your phone uh on your phone browser uh as long as it is you have logged into your gmail account or you can download the google doc application from the google play store right so once you have how you can access the google doc then you go in and choose a cv template the template already comes with the basic structure and basic descriptions of a cv so you when you go in is just to, to edit so you enter information into the template delete what is there and then put the information that uh speaks into your professional brand once you've done that then you save the document as a pdf uh saving the document in pdf is important to ensure that you maintain the controls over your your data so when you're using the google doc application to create a cv number one you select a template after you've selected a template the template comes with the basic structure and descriptions of a cv so for you you go in and edit the content and put in the content that applies to you and then you save it as a pdf don't don't ever forget to save it as a PDF so that you ensure that you have controls of your information. Nobody can add or subtract um, anything. So I want to pause here again for some questions. I don't know if we have any questions from the audience. Okay. So let's look at crafting cover letters. I know most of the time uh, with a lot of people, you find that people will put a lot of effort in creating a CV and then forget about crafting a cover letter. But the question is, what do we use a cover letter for? 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 So what is it that we use a, a cover letter for? Any answers? So a cover letter is important. And I know if all of us realize how important a cover letter is to your job search efforts, because a cover letter gives you an opportunity to tell the employer what you are good at. It gives you an opportunity to tell the employer in your own word. It's like you're writing your defense, right? A cover letter helps you helps you tell the em employer beyond what can be seen on the CV. Yeah? So, the, the mistake people usually make is that people pick whatever they have written in the CV and then they put it in the cover letter again. But, on the, on the cover letter, you are supposed to go beyond what is on the, on the CV. You are supposed to go beyond what is on the CV, right? That's what is important. So a cover letter is important in telling the employer in your own words, why do you stand out from the crowd? Why are you better than the rest? 
It is your time to sell yourself beyond what you have put on the CV because the CV cannot allow you to write some things, right? Cannot write, allow you to write about your personality, about your soft skills, about your strengths, about your talents. You may not. It's very clean cut. So when you're writing a CV, you must include a cover letter because 45% of re recruiters say that a, lo a lack of cover letter will result, result in a rejected CV. So 45% of the time that you send your cover letter, your CV without a cover letter, it is rejected automatically, right? Because most of the time, most of the time, the recruiters will look at the cover letter to have a better understanding of who you are. So let's look at the building blocks of a great cover letter. Let's look at the building blocks of a great cover letter. So for you to write a cover letter, it is in this five or these six steps. So let's start with the first one. The first part in your cover letter is salutation, right? So salutation, if you know the name of the person you're writing to, then uh, use it like, hey, Joy, hello, Miss, Miss Joy, dear Miss Joy, if you know the name of the person. But if you don't know the name of the person, do not go into the business of dear sir or madam. When you write dear sir or madam, it just looks like you're somebody who loves pretending that you know things yet you don't know. Because when you say sir or madam, it's like you're doing this work. So if you don't know, it's important to just make it clear that you don't know and you're not trying to pretend that you know, don't know by starting your salutation with to whom it may concern. Step number two now is introduction. Introduction is now introduce who you are introduce what you do, what are your interests, introduce what job you are applying for and where you heard about it. So it could be like you have started with it, to whom it may concern. My name is Joy Atieno. I'm a digital marketer uh, who is greatly versed with social media, copywriting and uh, media buying. I am applying for the digital marketing job that I saw open in your company on fuzu.com. So that is it enough for introduction and then now block number three is summarizing yourself describe now what is important to you right uh what what is important to you what you're good at what you enjoy what you are why you are applying so you can say something like uh applying applying uh creativity and innovation uh in solving everyday business challenges and improving uh uh and improving brands is my driving force yeah so you describe what you enjoy it uh you enjoy helping companies uh become better position their brands and increase their bottom line bring joy and fulfillment uh to you so it will show them why you're applying right but it's not enough to just summarize yourself and uh, say why you're applying it's now important to explain why you are also the right candidate Remember, any company is trying to hire because they have a problem that they're looking for somebody who can bring a solution, right? So explain why you're the right candidate. So number one, the best way you can nail this part is look at the job description. Read it carefully. Look at the language, uh, look at the language that has been used. Research the company and see the problems that they're facing at the moment. Look at the industry. What are the challenges in the industry? What are the new developments in that industry? Once you've understood this, then you can bring in the aspect of your work and personal skills that can help to solve that solution. So this around your experience, this around the skills that you hold, this around the strength that you have that will help you and make you be the suitable and the right candidate. So once you have written why you're the right candidate, then show, back it up with the relevant achievements. Is it that you've done some certifications? Is it that you've had volunteering experience? Is it that you speak several languages so you are able to work in diverse uh, cultural backgrounds? Is it that you have a unique skill set and, and, and unique strengths that make you better? So talk about relevant achievements. If it's around uh, acquiring papers, if it's around your experience, it's around any unique thing that you've done, then you want to put it here. And then finally, you sign off. Signing off is not enough to say, I'm looking forward to hear from you. Uh, still hype yourself. Tell them if you're looking for the best digital marketer, kindly arrange to have uh, an interview with me so that you can take this conversation further. Uh, tell them that you're looking forward to hear from them. 
and tell them that you're also available on both uh if you've provided your phone number and your email tell them that you're available in case they need uh, further information about you so just show the enthusiasm that you have uh toward that opportunity so let me pause here and take some questions Let me pause here and take some questions. So if there are no questions, then we will go into we will go into seeing our next steps. But guys, ask some questions. I can see good feedback coming in. Sunday Innocent is joining us from Kampala. Thank you, uh, Sunday. Uh, Sunday is complaining that there is a network problem. Um, I hope I hope the problem um, gets fixed soon. Uh, so Lexion Arnold is joining from End Poverty. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. I see Marcy saying, I think she was fired. Okay, this was when we were talking about the footprint. Okay. Uh, Massey still says a cover letter is a great way in defending your brand. True. It's a great way to sell yourself better. So, guys, are there any questions to this point? Are there any questions? Are there any questions to this point? Okay, so if there are no questions, then let's look at our let's look at our next steps. So next steps number one, go to learn digital. Sorry, number one, go to learn digital. Google.com. So when you go to this page, learn digital. Google.com, you're able to access a lot more uh, a lot more content. You are able to access beyond uh just what well, this was just a one hour session right i uh, may not have covered uh everything but when you go online to our link then you are able to uh access more uh more contents then also give us feedback right uh give us feedback so that we are able to improve our content we are able to improve how we offer it so also don't forget to give us uh to give us feedback the other thing as always everybody who has joined this session is going to get a certificate right so everybody who has joined the session is going to get a certificate uh my moderator evans is going to be sharing the is going to be sharing the links in a bit so uh, you get your certificate give us feedback uh get to learn more um on our on our learning portal learn digital .google.com, and then we shall continue from there so thank you so much guys it has been great to have you join us but also don't forget to follow us on social media we are on facebook we are on linkedin uh, we are on facebook we are on twitter we are on instagram so make sure to follow us so that you are updated of all the uh, opportunities that we'll, we shall be sharing with you. And thank you. At this point, I'd like to thank you. say thank you. Uh, we finished there. Let's meet in the afternoon. We have another session at uh, 2 p.m. So I'm excited and we'll be seeing you. Uh, we'll be seeing you then. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me. I've been your presenter, Joy. I was joined on the chat button by my moderator, Evans. So see you again at 2 p.m. Bye.